Hello, out of the park baseball friends. Welcome to July 11th, 1989. It's All Star Weekend, so let's take a look at what's going on in this alternate reality. Here's your standings at this point in time. The NL West is getting really interesting. The Astros' lead has shrunk to one, and Teddy Higuera has just been lost for the season, so things are starting to look up for the Reds. Meanwhile, in the East, we have a turning of the tides. The Mets have overtaken the Phillies for first place in, the, in that division. Pretty exciting division with five games separating the first place Mets and the last place Pirates and Cardinals. So pretty much anything can happen in that side of the, of the world. The Orioles have made a big move in the AL East overtaking the Blue Jays, who were cruising in June. Uh, but, uh, yeah, a big turn of events in the, in the AL East. The Brewers and the Yankees are not to be underestimated. Both are pretty talented teams, and the Brewers have just made a big move, trading for Rick Sutcliffe uh, from the Cardinals of the NL East. Um, so they've stacked up a pretty good rotation to, to pair with their already potent lineup. Meanwhile, in the AL West, the Royals made their move, and they happened to do it coincidingly with a, uh, a slump by the Texas Rangers. So just uh, 10 games ago, the Rangers were still right behind the Royals, you know, game back. Uh, but the Royals have run off 10 in a row, while the Rangers have uh, lost a bunch of games to the, the A's and the Angels. So... Uh, Suddenly, that division is is broken open by the Royals. Uh, meanwhile, in the not so happy category, the Indians are 24 and 63, and if you're doing the math at home, that puts them on pace to lose 117 games. So they're at risk of being one of the worst teams ever. We'll see what happens on that front. And then one other bit of bad news uh, in your leaderboard: uh, Ramon, Her or, sorry, Ramon Martinez has been having a great year for the Atlanta Braves. However, he has just uh, undergone elbow surgery and he's going to be out for 12 months. So a really tough break for one of the best young pitchers in the game. So anyway, as I mentioned, it's All-Star Weekend. So let's take a look at who made the squad. We'll go ahead and start with the National League. Oop, that's Brett Saberhagen. So interestingly, the National League uh, have four of their starters that were voted in get injured. Um, Dan actually, sorry, three because the nine, the nine slots the pitcher. Um, Danny Tartable was voted in as the starting third baseman. He's out with an oblique for a couple weeks. Ken Griffey Jr. is the center fielder. Um, not a major injury, but it looks like they hold him out of the All-Star game, even with a minor one. And then Pedro Munoz got voted in as the right fielder. So the National League's kind of hurting with some of the injuries. Looking at the full roster here, um, I believe I can sort this to show team. There we go. Let's show you the whole thing. The, let's see, the Houston Astros have the most all-stars. Got uh, Bonds and Jeffries that we've talked about. Um, Brian Givens made the team, having a really good season uh, in their rotation. Seven wins already, two and a half ERA. Scott Whaley made it as their closer with 16 saves. And then Mark Davis, who interestingly, it was either 88 or 89, he won the Cy Young Award for the Padres in real life. He's not it's doing anything spectacular. In fact, it's pretty clear they're using him as a starter. Um, and he's doing pretty well with it. Um, so he's made the all-star team for the Astros. Kind of interesting for a team that doesn't have a whole lot of depth, but they actually got five all-stars. Um, as for the American League, get this going as well. They do not have any injuries, um, but we'll jump into their roster. There's no one team that has really the most. The, the Yankees, the A's, and my Rangers have four All-Stars each. And then interestingly, the Royals, who have really run away with the AL West and have the best record in baseball, only have three. 
George Brett made it, as you would certainly expect. He's the reigning MVP. Cohn and Schilling made it, uh, but Randy Johnson didn't make it, and none of the other big uh, big hitters for the Royals made it either. Um, so pretty spread out as far as the uh, American League is concerned. As for my Rangers, my four, top of my lineup that's been playing fantastic this year, Alisea and Rich Amaral, uh, are voted in as All-Star. In fact, sorry, Amaral was voted in, so he's going to start in center field. Alisea made it as a reserve. Uh, Mark Clear, my closer, uh, is in as a reserve. And then Daryl Strawberry was voted in as the designated hitter. So I actually have two starters and two reserves about to play in this All-Star game. So that is what we are going to do. I actually have a couple trades I'm going to make today as well, but we're going to do that after the All-Star game. So we'll have a little fun here and see what kind of entertainment we can get out of an exhibition game. Also be interesting to see who the National League chooses as far as its uh, replacements for those injured players. But here's our here's our lineups. Looks like it's putting Julio Franco in it. Oh no, Julio Franco was voted in. Interestingly he you know he's he's converted from second base and his ratings as a first baseman aren't that great. Kind of similar to what he did in real life. He moved to first base around this time. Um, so we've got Gary Sheffield coming in at third and definitely a good replacement. Uh, Kenny Lofton is going to play center field for the National League. And who am I missing? Who else was? I think right field. So George Pace, who is a nobody in real life, but big time power hitter in in the game is going to be playing uh, starting at right field for the National League. And then it looks like they're going to lead off with Amaral. Strawberry is going to hit fourth. Unfortunately, he's in a big slump. Um, decent part of the, the losing streak that I've got going. Kurt Schilling is going to start for the American League. And why not? Completely dominant. Saberhagen is going for the National League. So Saberhagen is just 7-7. Seven and seven. Again, for those last place Cardinals who are only five games out. Uh, and then Schilling is 12-4 and four with a 2-3 ERA for the American League. So we're going to do this now. You may hear my cheerleaders in the background. They're super excited to be rooting for the American League. I'm going to turn my volume down a little bit. Oh, what was that? William Franco on with a base hit. Ooh, that's a home run by Barry Bonds, of course. Bonds homers off of Schilling. And the National League takes an early lead. And the AL is out of the first. So here is Saberhagen for the National League. Jay Bell, your starting shortstop, definitely a familiar name. And the American League goes one, two, three. We're playing this All-Star game in California. If you recall, that's where the game was played in real life. And the American League started off with a back-to-back -back home runs between Bo Jackson and Wade Boggs. I'll show you Bo Jackson a little bit after the game, what he's up to. He's not playing in this game. Mike Balecki's in for the National League. Go team, go! That was a cheerleader. Frank Thomas made the All-Star game as the first baseman for the American League, actually voted in. He's wearing number 47 instead of 35. And Brady Anderson has driven in a run for the American League. Chili Davis cannot bring in that second one. Eric Hansen for the Tigers in the American League. That's Tim 
Reigns with his first hit of the All-Star game. Let's see if Bonds can go deep again. I know, but Reigns stolen base. And Bonds hits it hard, but lines up to Brady Anderson in right field. Mark Lemke is an all-star. Fairly famous little man for the Atlanta Braves in real life. He's an athletic in this game. Amaral's in for two, unfortunately. And the AL is done in the third. Tom Messier for the American League and the Yankees coming in. Gets Serhoff. The replacement Gary Sheffield is on base. And George Pace with a hit. So the NL is threatening here in the fourth inning. They do not score. Alright, time for the American League to hit in the fourth. Larry Walker lines out to Barry Bonds and left. Strawberries 0 for 2. George Brett gets one into the corner, but Drake Thomas cannot drive him home. Into the fifth we go, and here's the Rangers' Mark Clear, who walks the first batter he faces. And that's trouble. Tim Reigns with his second hit of the game. And that's a triple, so the NL take a 3-1 lead. Another hit by Jose Offerman of the Pirates. Put him up 4-1. My Rangers are not having a great showing so far. I'm 0 for 4 at the plate. And two runs given up by my closer. But it does get out of it with a double play here. So let's see if the American League can get back in this game. Brady Anderson with a second hit. Lead off double for the American League. Chili Davis hits a home run to left center field going opposite field against Todd Stottlemyre of the Giants. American League jumps right back into this game. Troy Neal, not a very famous name in real life, but he is among the leaders in the American League in batting average and slugging percentage. Not no luck that time, but Molitor is on with a walk and a stolen base. Larry Walker can't get him in. We got a tight one here into the sixth inning. Melito Perez in for the American League of the Athletics. Formerly a White Sox and Yankee in real life. Gets the first two batters. And he gets the side out in order. Caminiti's in for the A's in the American League. And great play by Lofton out there in center. Brett with a second hit for the American League and the Royals. Frank Thomas has his first career All-Star hit. Big RBI opportunity for the American League, but it's a double play. Buner rounds out Yount to Reigns to Jose Offerman playing first base. Kenny Lofton of the Chicago Cubs flies out to right and Joey Cora making an all-star game as well. As I mentioned before, Jose Offerman playing first base and Hits a triple scoring Lemke and putting the National League up 5-3. to three. Belinda gets Mike Young to end the top of the seventh. So National League pulls away a little bit again. Todd Worrell of the Cardinals coming in. Seeing if he can hold this lead. Here's Alisea of the Rangers and we cannot get a hit. It's been a rough All-Star game for my guys. And Troy Neal lines out to end the seventh, running out of outs for the American League. 
Jimenez in for the Yankees in the American League. Let's see if he can hold the National League. Robin Yount gets four bats in this All-Star game, gets his first hit. Looks like they're going to try and pad this lead further. And Bobby Benilla hits it into the gap. Six to three National League. They are closing in on this victory. Six outs remaining for the American League. Molitor will lead off. And that is a good start for them. Larry Walker is going to get another bat. And he is 0 for 4. Caminiti is going to pop out. And Mark McGuire is pinching in for the American League. And he hits it into the corner. We'll see if this will score a run. It sure will. Back to a two-run lead for the National League. Fred McGriff pinch hitting and draws a walk. Lead run is at the plate. Buhner singles to left. That scores another run for the American League. And the tying run is on third for Butch Weiniger. And actually, no, Mike Stanley's going to pinch hit for him. But he strikes out Tim Scott of the Padres. Strikes him out to end the threat. Paul Ossemacher of the Blue Jays in to see if he can hold this lead at one. Jose Offerman's had a huge role in this game, and he's on for the third time. Not only that, he steals second. And he is going to score on this base hit from Mike Young. What a game for Jose Offerman, maybe your MVP award winner. Meanwhile, now Mike Young is stealing a base on Asamaker. And here is your last chance for the American League. It looks like Alisea is going to lead off against Fred Wilburn. And our Rangers finally have a hit in this All-Star game. The tying run is at the plate now. And Troy Neal rounds out into a double play. So Wally Joyner is your last chance. And that is it. Your National League is your winners of this All-Star game. Goofy looking logos here. I don't know what happened on that one. Let's see who's our... Yep, Jose Offerman was was your MVP award winner. Again, uh, yeah, two for two. Plus a walk, a run, two RBI. Congratulations to him. He really has no business playing first base, let alone in an all-star game. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's what can happen. Let's see if anyone else had a good game. Brett had two hits. Brady Anderson had two hits. Uh, Tim Raines had two hits for the National League. Uh, we had a couple home runs. Uh, Barry Bonds hit one in the first. And Shirley Davis hit one in the fifth for the American League. As for your pitchers... Uh, Mike Bilecki is your winner from the Phillies, while Kurt Schilling is the loser from the American League. Fred Wilburn, starting pitcher of the Giants, uh, is your saver of the game. Only 5-13 and 13 in real life, but still made the All-Star game because he's got some really great numbers. Um, that picture looks, picture looks familiar. That's Fred Willard. Uh, Fred Wilburn did not really pitch in the major league in real life, and a friend of mine asked, "Isn't that is that Fred Willard you're asking about from uh, from Modern Family?" So we went ahead and just slapped his picture on there. Um, you know, gotta have some fun with the game. And as I mentioned, Jose Offerman. So that's it. Your National League are your winners. We're gonna go ahead and leave this game. So what happened to Bo Jackson anyway? He is not an All Star, and He's not a big leaguer either. He does have some big league experience, but he's actually in my organization, the Rangers, playing in A ball. Uh, he has, uh, again, some major league experience with the Indians, really just a handful of bats, 38 in 1986 and 74 and 87. Performed admirably, actually, and actually had a good year in AAA as well. But when you're in the same organization as 
Sammy Sosa and uh, Tony Chance is a good uh, future big leaguer. Daryl Hamilton, Derek Bell, you're going to get shoved down the pecking order in the minor leaguers, in the minor leagues. So uh, he is in, uh, in a ball at this point. And I will probably lose him at the end of the season because he is uh, eligible for the Rule 5 draft. I don't think I will protect him in the 40-man roster. Um, so we'll see what happens with Bo Jackson. He's been pretty famous for the leadoff home run he hit for the American League in the real 1989 World Series. Um, so one other thing we're going to do today, I've already lined up a couple of the trades. Time for the Rangers to, to do some business. Um, as I mentioned last time, was just waiting for Leo Gomez to get healthy, get some game experience. So it is, uh, it is that time. He is ready for call-up, which is going to trigger a couple of trades for me. The first deal I'm going to make is with the California Angels, who are still behind me by, by a ways and pretty much out of it. Um, they've put Dave Magadan on the block, um, who is pretty outstanding player, just a per, like um, just perfect leadoff hitter um, with that contact eye and you know avoiding strikeouts. Um, can't play the field whatsoever, so he's he's going to be a DH for me. Um, you know he certainly makes my team better. Who knows? Maybe I have a miracle and catch the Royals, and I can pay for him. Um, the, the, the Angels are going to pick up some of his salary, and I've got some money to spend. The real play here is I'm pretty sure he's going to be a type A free agent. So if I play out the string with him, who knows, maybe I re-sign him and get lucky, but I certainly won't mind getting a couple draft picks. Um, what I do have to give up is Gary Renneke, who is uh, nearing the end of his career. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised that the Angels want him, um, but I... You know, they may, they're not trying to get out of underneath salary because they've got tons of budget room. Um, but I think the real guy they want here is Dan Murphy, who has a lot of potential. Um, I shouldn't say potential. Like in the right situation, he can be pretty pretty strong. The Angels have a have a pretty uh, pitching favorable ballpark, so a guy like him who strikes out a lot of uh, hitters. Uh, gives up a ton of fly balls and walks a lot of guys. Is probably a good fit for them. Um, again, he's a reliever right now. He's my long reliever, so his stuff isn't really 20 out of 20. I believe it's 18 or 16. Um, so that's why I have to give up. Um, again, so this is actually clearing up two spots for me because I will be able to call up uh, another one of my starting pitchers um, as a result. In fact, the person I'm be calling up is going to be Jim Abbott, um, who is uh, also pretty much ready to go. So this is trade number one. We're going to go ahead and do that right now. And then I'm actually going to make a second trade. Make sure I got this thing capped out. Yeah, so, I, so they're going to pay for 20% of, of Magadan's deal. Um, pretty big contract, but uh, I can take it. I'm going to lose 276000 but I've got plenty to go. So that is deal number one. And he's popular, which helps me a ton at the at the gate. And then the second move is gonna is fairly similar. I feel like I'm gonna be able to move players that aren't really in my long term plans. Um, in this case, getting Kenneth Walker, who does not really have any real does not have any real life major league experience, but he's been a pretty strong closer. Um, mainly for the uh, Atlanta Braves, and he was traded to the Red Sox. Um, so kind of a similar situation. He's a free agent. Feels like he's more of an outside chance of getting type A. And I should explain this for those of you not familiar with the older compensation system. The best free agents get classified as type A and type B. And your type A free agents, the best of the best ones for that year, the, the team that signs them has to, if, it, if their first round pick is in the last half of the draft, they have to give it to the play, to the team that they lost him to, or the team that they signed him from. And then the team that lost the player also gets a, a, a compensatory pick um, between the first and the second round. So if both these guys end up being type A, I get four extra draft picks that are like in the top 35, which is spectacular. So I'm kind of taking my chances here, but this one, this one feels lower risk. Um, Mohorsik's going to go. 
He's having a nice year for me. Um, he is 33. He starts his arbitration. I feel like I've got some other minor leaguers that can replace him. Probably a little bit of an, of an upgrade. And then they want two minor leaguers that I'm not really going to be able to do anything with. Um, Joaquin Contreras is more of a speed merchant. But with my corner outfield, there's no way he sees the light of day. And he's Rule 5 eligible, so nothing to worry about losing him. And I have no idea why they even want this guy. Um, he's a minor league free agent at the end of the year. Nothing really to do here. So kind of just taking a gamble here. You know, I could potentially get something else for Morsic, but... Um, Kenneth Walker is what we're going to go after here. I don't think I can get any, uh, yeah, I can't get any money out of them. Um, in fact, I have screwed something up here because they don't want to do this trade anymore. So let's see what I can figure out here. I don't know why that happened. Um, let's see, why did they... Why did they change their mind? Is it because I played the All-Star game that they changed their mind? There's none of these other players. Actually, Tabor I wouldn't mind giving away because he's on his way out of town anyway. So that's a possibility. Don't think I really want to move any of these other guys. Okay, Juan Castillo is another guy I could do. This was the player I was going to move. All right, well, I'm going to figure this out uh, offline here, but that was the second trade I am making. So we are uh, 20 days from the trade deadline. I have uh, more moves to make. Um, so we may do, and we'll see if I do another one of these at the trade deadline or if I push the next one to August. Hope you've enjoyed this edition. Please remember to uh, subscribe. If you think I should be doing something different with my team or if you've got any ideas for me, feel free to throw a comment out there. Uh, and I hope I'll see you for more of these videos in the future. Take care, everyone. Good job, team!